We know we made the right choice when we invited you to come on the show today. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, we were seen ahead of me. I never knew I was going there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, there you go. So you see, you know, but it's a culture. And it's a, the, the fact that you, your name, you know, your, your footprint, your handprint is all over Jamaica's music. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate the role that you played, you know, cause, because you was not necessarily a singer. Man, so no, I missed, it's a drop legs. But you need to dig into the history. And, and that is why we're looking forward to the book. But let's talk about Delroy, because I think, um, unlike you, because you are here and you can, you know, you can speak for yourself. People like a Delroy Wilson, how do you regard Delroy and his contribution to the music um, um, Copeland? Well, I can tell you, you know, um, knowing him from then, because he's just one year younger than me, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember going to Studio One with my little group and my motor organ, you know, the Harmony Cats, the first group mm -hmm. I was in, you know. And I'm going <laughs> up to Harmony Studio Cats. One. I could barely get past the front gate, right? Because inside there was stalwarts of singers with guitars and your harmonies was the order of the day, you know. Right. And then this little boy, you know, I mean, I said, let me if he can get in, let me can get in there, man. So I get into the yard and I was even under the tree and when a lot of the blues blasters, not busters, blasters and yeah. some other groups singing and so on. That and is Clue group. Yes. You know, and they said, this little boy, you know, reminds me of Dennis Brown in the same bracket thing. You know, mm -hmm. was the one that put out all those hits I've been hearing on the radio. And so I started admiring from then, you know. And then when I go down to Boys Town to scout meet and run into him, they would sit and talk. And um he was he was an example, right, for the youths coming up because they, those years, you know, to be a singer was degraded, was looked down on, you know, right? You right. ever singer boy, you know, parents <laughs> don't want you to go into them kind of things that guys just look down on. You know, but him as one of the youngest at the time was turning out hits after hits after hits. Yeah, I, it, it was, I, I understand at 13 years old, he had, what was it, got about about seven or eight tunes yeah, man, that I were mean, on the charts. Um, yes. At, at 13 years old, in fact, when he started singing, he could barely reach the microphone. They had to give him, remember them days, he had like a, a red stripe box. Cardboard red yeah. stripe box, and him stand right. up on the red stripe box to reach a microphone. But you imagine a 13 year old in a, in a, you know, dominating because at the them time it was more, it was, it was ska and a little bit right. of blues. Eh? Right. And, and, um, here is a little 12, 13 year old boy. I fling down some tune that would be a bigger man than him can walk in a film footprint. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you know. But the, uh, and that, and that is the thing for me. When you look back and you say, how can somebody make this this huge contribution? But the system, on, uh, outside of people like yourself and, you know, perhaps us, what we're doing here, nobody talk about Delroy Wilson, you know? At least not in a venerable way. No, you, you, you've you got know, the, the, same, the same kind of respect and breath that uh, Dennis Brown or uh, Bob Marley gets. Nobody really sees Dennis Brown in the same light. You mean, you mean Delroy? I mean, Delroy will see in the same light. But yet, as you've just pointed out to Copeland, a lot of these singers too were looking at him as an example in terms of, you know, how to, 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 to think. To speak a little bit more about that for us. Yeah, you see, being a, such a young person, and it's an art that your yeah, people are looked upon. He's caught in a cross, a cross section there. Right. And it's a good example for the new ones who say, but if him can do it, I can do it too. You know? And um, you know, when he started turning out these hits after hits, especially when it's spit in the sky, it fall in your eye, that's no lie. You know, and then mm -hmm. tune it, everybody says, So what? And he was the talk of the town at all the dances then. You know, when you talk about shady groove. Rona first as all all these dance places was this little 12 13 year old boy ruling the, the, the dance you know so it was it was a good thing for people to look up to and um have great hope from the others because he was in in parallel or probably a little stronger than even when the whalers at that time you know because yeah, you people know, it, it, it it definitely was based on yeah. what my research says that the whalers basically step aside when 
when this little youth come in the street, because remember, to Coxon, if I remember, was using him. There was a feud between Coxon um, and Prince Buster, and, Prince Buster mm. and Coxon with Duke Reed to a lesser extent. And so he was kind of the ammunition because when Cox and Trace one of them, he just get the microphone a tune. and say, cut a tune. <laughs> and and we, which take us to spit in the sky. We're going to just touch a few of those and yeah. we run right we had, we had alluded to that with Joe Likes. That right. was one of the first songs. And then let's play Spit in the Sky and a couple of those. Hi there. If you enjoy that clip, go on over to our website at yardmedia.com where you can watch the entire broadcast at your leisure. And while you're there, why don't you check out our other reggae music features? And before you leave, pick up some of our Jamaican reggae merchandise. And hey, don't forget to tell your friends. My name is Garth, otherwise known as Big G. My name is Richie Blackford.